Hi, welcome to the Big Bear Homestead. And today, we're gonna talk about a worm composting bin. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about setting up a worm composting bin. Now, if you guys were in the In the Garden with Big Bear live stream a couple of Wednesdays ago at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, you guys would have learned how important a worm composting bin is to a homesteader, a gardener, really anybody that's trying to grow anything. If not, if you missed that, I'm going to link it at the end of this video in the end screen annotations. So, with all that being said, let's get into setting this thing up. Okay, so before we get into the step-by-step -step of how to set this up, let's talk about the list of materials that you're going to need in order to set this up how we do it. Okay, as you guys know, we use, well, no, as you can see, we use an old chest freezer as our bin. And the reason why we use that is one, it gives us a good depth so we can uh, produce a lot of worm compost. Two, it has a nice lid on it that all we got to do is put some shims underneath it to help keep the airflow. And three, it has a natural drain to it. So that way we don't have to worry about drowning our worms as we keep this moist and the worm tea is being produced. It gives us a nice easy way to be able to collect the worm tea. Now, the things that you're going to need to be able to set this up like how we do is cardboard, leaves, dead leaves that you just rake up off the ground, food, food waste your vegetable matter and stuff like that that's on the approved list that you can put in the worm composting bin and worms. So now that we know our list of materials, how do we set it up? All right, so let's talk about how we set up our worm composting bin in our chest freezer, okay? Once the freezer is completely cleaned out, okay at least in our case from last year's worm compost we go ahead and we take our cardboard boxes and we put a layer of cardboard down on the bottom now this does a couple of things for us one it adds insulation between the bottom of the freezer and all of our compost and our worms and everybody like that also it helps with the drainage meaning it stops a lot of the bigger material from going and getting clogged in our drain hole which would back everything up and possibly end up drowning our worms after we got that laid in then we put a good two to four inch layer of leaves in our chest freezer now that also serves multiple reasons one it helps with the drainage two it gives our worms a comfortable place to go hang out, chill, relax. They'll also eat on some of the some of the leaves and stuff like that. And it also encourages the bacteria growth that I always like to talk about, you know, that party. After you do that, you go ahead and you soak it. You got to soak it to start the process for that bacteria growth and everything. You want your leaves about the consistency of a damp sponge. What I do, it just it just seems easier for me as I go ahead and I give it a really good soaking and then I wait 24 to 48 hours depending upon my weather before I add anything else you want it to get to a damp sponge like so usually when I give it a good soaking it takes about that long and then we come back and then you add your food waste now remember you want to add the food waste that is specifically approved for a worm composting bin now so things you want to stay away from are obviously meat, dairy, the oils. They also say you want to limit the amount of onions and citrus peels and broccoli and stuff like that that goes in there because of the odor. But hey, sometimes when you got kids, a compost 
container is a compost container, they don't think about which one's going to which, and it gets tossed in there. I mean, as you'll see in a B-roll, I think there's a couple of orange peels in this one. Then, you add your food waste in there. After that, you add your worms. Now, in that live stream class that we gave that's going to be linked at the end screen annotation, we give you a good way to figure out how many pounds of worms you'll need for your worm composting bin. And another rule of thumb is, is if as you're feeding them, okay, if you noticed that it seems like every time you come back, all of yesterday's stuff is gone, and you might find an occasional dead worm, they may be starving. So you either have to remove some of the worms, or you got to find a way to add more food waste into your worm composting bin. Okay? Now, on the flip side of that coin, if you come back here and it looks like nothing's been touched, you need to add more worms because you don't have enough worms, and they've got so much in there to eat that stuff is literally going to start to decay on its own, and that could cause you more problems because it can start to attract the house flies, the blow flies, the black soldier flies, mice, rats, and other type of critters that not only will eat that waste, but they'll eat your worms. So it's a delicate balance and you just got to pay attention, but it's really easy to achieve. After you got that done, you lower your lid, or at least in our case, we'll lower our lid, we'll put some shims on there, put a cinder block on top of it, and that the shims hold the lid up enough, just enough to keep a good constant airflow in there and then all we do is feed it and then at the end of the season we dump it all out and next spring we start new it's just that simple really it's not a lot it's not rocket science um, it's fun to do I know a lot of you guys are not crazy about touching the worms but here's the thing you buy the worm in the plastic container and you just dump it in there you don't gotta touch it dumping them in there close the lid you ain't even gotta look at them you could be like See, you ain't even got to look. Bam. Okay? So, but they are a great thing. And then when you empty it out, empty worms and all, put them in your raised beds, put them in your garden. And then that way you can, it'll start to encourage worm growth in your garden. And it'll help your garden through aeration, the cat worm casters, castings, and all of that. So, that's it. That's how you set it up. I hope you guys found this video informative and helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. If this is your first time here to the Big Bear Homestead, we welcome you. Please slide on over and hit our icon in the lower right hand corner, the little tiny one. That'll take you to where you can subscribe. We'd love to have you. Don't forget about our live stream Saturday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Thanks for coming by the Big Bear Homestead, and like always, have a nice day. Alright, worm compost bin in 30 seconds, take one. Alright, you got a bin. You need cardboard, leaves. need the water, organic matter, worms, you're done. All right, let's go. I'm hungry. Yep, have a nice day.